Huh? This is essentially great graduate level graduate level uh, concept. So it's not easy. But I, 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 I say that you must understand this. This is a very interesting concept. Actually, this was done based on Green's theorem. And Green, it's a long time ago in 19th century, he was a, a uh, uh, he was a farmer huh, in England. He only studied during the weekend in the library, and he found this fantastic concept. Yeah. Okay. What I can do now is I multiply g over here, g and g. And I multiply p over here. Okay. Right? And then subtract out. And the integrate from 0 to L. Right? Then what I will get is followed. I subtract equation 1 that is multiplied by g from the equation 2 that is multiplied by p. Then I will have this one uh, the nothing is cancelled out. Now nothing is cancelled out, right? So now let's assume that fxt is harmonic in time. Or we, 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 we consider the, the, the solution that is harmonic in time, fx j omega t. And then we can also assume P x t is capital P x exponential minus j omega t. If you are not convenient this, let me put f0 over here, f0 over here, and this is f. OK, then the equation I have would be g d square p, not partial d square p dx square, because I am putting this assumption over there, in other words, I'm assuming the solution is a harmonic in time. I'm, in other words, I'm seeing the solution in frequency domain. In other words, I want to see the solution, solution like <whistles> separately, and I want to add it up. OK? Then what I have? P d square P d t square give me minus omega square and omega square over c square is k square minus makes plus so I have k square capital P that has to be equal to what? minus fx okay and I have g over here okay and this one is a p d square g d x square. And similarly, I have a k square g p that is what? Minus p delta x minus x zero. Okay? Then I subtract out. Then what I will have? 
this will go away, and I have p d square g uh, excuse me uh, yeah, this one have g yeah right okay. <laughs> Okay, it looks nice. And I have, okay. I will check this, this from this, then I have P d square g dx square minus g d, sorry, sorry about this notation. No partial. This has to be g d square p dx square, that is equal to, uh, okay, minus p delta x minus x zero plus g fx, okay? And then because I am only interested the sound field between x equal 0 to x equal L. I'm trying to integrate this between x equal 0 to L with respect to dx. Okay. Then what I have? Okay, this is very interesting term. This is a pressure. This is a second derivative with respect to G. And this is a second derivative with respect to P. What is a second derivative with respect to P? But you do know the first derivative of P. What is it? That is related with dp dx is related with what? Using Euler equation, we know that minus dp dx is related with the change of velocity with respect to time. So we can say that is related with the velocity when we talk about pressure field in frequency domain. Because du dt is simply minus j omega, the magnitude of velocity. Right? So we want to change this to physically realizable form, dpdx or dgdx. And how can you do that? How can we change this to dgdx or dpdx? Anybody has an idea? Hmm? Yongwa, Yongwa? I'm sure you have an idea, right? Huh? No? Kiuni, Kiuni. You have an idea how to do it? Hmm? Tesoge, You you must have a good idea, right? <coughs> what is what is it, what is the way to reduce the order of differentiation? Integration by part, Indra. That's why I didn't ask you that you, you might have some idea. Integration by part, right? Integration by part reduces order of differentiation. That means integration by part, as the name implies, because it operates integration, integration always reduces differentiation's order, right? So but that's very logical. Right? So, let's do the integration part, part of this. <laughs> 